this is Captain Chaudhary. My today's topic is why the ship's trim changes as you go from one density to other density. The specific reason for this has to be understood why the ship should change the trim and it also can be extended to explain why the ship's trim changes when the ship scots. Scotting is just increasing of underwater volume suddenly because of hydrodynamic interactions. So we will have the same answer for uh, change of trim during scotting and change of trim when the ship goes from one density to other density. Let us say the ship was in uh, uh, salt water and the ship wants to go to fresh water. Right? So there is increase of underwater volume. There is no change of displacement kg and lcg. I always say that maintain this that when the ship goes from one density to other density the things which do not change is displacement kg and lcg the rest everything changes but for this explanation for the time being what we assume that there is small change of draft so we may assume that practically the lcf as well as water plane area does not change even for a ship shaped vessel but as you know the ship has got slight flare and because of that the water plane area as well as the LCF should change with the change of density but uh, we are assuming that it is nearly constant or it is constant for the explanation. Now let us say the ship initially was in salt water. I want to make the height of the ship uh, slightly on a higher side so that I can explain my point right uh, this is the initial water level say for example in salt water and the water level the mean water level in the fresh water would be like this so this is the first density and this is the second density as the ship goes i want to repeat my statement on equilibrium what is the equilibrium there is varying ideas in respect of equilibrium. There are varying answers in respect of equilibrium. I don't want to say that. But there are various explanations uh, which I will tell you. In the school or college physics you might have read that there is equilibrium on a body when net resultant forces or net resultant moments acting on the body tend to become zero. That means the body neither moves because of force nor the body turns because of moment. So the body is in equilibrium. Then people also uh, remember it. Then people also understand equilibrium uh, in this way that the center of gravity of the ship and center of buoyancy of the ship they are vertically in one line. So that is equilibrium. Third way in which uh, we can explain the equilibrium is when the ship is stand still. When the ship is stand still, that means a pilot sitting in the pilot boat looks at the ship, not making any movement. She is at stand still. So it's a different story. What is the GM of the ship? The ship is listed. Ship is at angle of law. But even if in the listed condition at angle of law in dry dock when the ship is not making any movement that means the ship is in equilibrium. So stand still means making no movement. No rolling, no pitching. That means when the ship is rolling and pitching she is not in equilibrium. She is trying to attain the equilibrium. And the fourth explanation for uh, the equilibrium is we draw this GZ curve, curve of statical stability. The GZ curve gives the zero value of GZ at the start normally or at the listed angle normally. And then at angle of vanishing stability also the GZ is zero. It means that the ship can be in equilibrium while the ship. That means the ship can be in equilibrium when she is upright and she can also be in equilibrium when she is healed to an angle of uh, say for example angle of vanishing stability because even at the angle of vanishing stability if the water does not fill up in the compartments then you will find that the G and B are in vertical line. So we were talking about a ship which was in salt water and let us say the ship positively was in equilibrium. She was in equilibrium when she was in salt water. Otherwise, if G and B are not in one vertical line, it cannot be a steady state of equilibrium. She was in equilibrium, so G and B were in a straight line. 
but not necessarily the center of flotation. Center of flotation probably was here and we are assuming that when the ship goes from salt water to fresh water, the water plane area and center of flotation position practically does not change. So F moves to F1 when the ship comes to fresh water. If we cut the ship uh, along the water plane area and we look at the water plane area, the centroid of the water plane area is center of flotation. It is like a, a table top when we put the sand mica on top of it. Where is the centroid of sand mica? You can find out by plotting the diagonal. So center of flotation is centroid of water plane area. But now when the ship goes from salt water to fresh water, we add a buoyancy layer. This buoyancy layer is added to the ship. Underwater volume increases. This is like a mm, plywood of a tabletop. Water plane area is like sand mica of the tabletop and the added buoyancy layer is like plywood of the tabletop. So uh, even the centroid of the plywood can be found out in the same fashion. Can I say that this buoyancy layer that is added will have the centroid in the middle of F and F1? So this is the point at which I can say that when the ship comes from salt water to fresh water, the buoyancy, the added buoyancy is added at this point. Now from the pre-sea studies, we know that if this was the center of gravity of the ship and if a weight is added over here, the center of gravity would move in the direction of uh, the point where the uh, weight is added and in case the weight is removed, it will move away from the weight. This is what we know in respect of uh, adding or removing the weights from the ship. Now in case of uh, uh, this ship, this explanation, what I am saying is the buoyancy is added, not the weight, the buoyancy is added. So what will happen to the B? B will move in the direction of the buoyancy point at which the buoyancy is added and say B will come to the position B1 over here and because of the original habits B will work upwards and it will push the ship from here. Can I say wherever B goes, whether B goes forward or B goes aft, wherever B goes it will lift the ship from there. G will continue to do its work. G will continue to remain there and you can see that uh, when B moves towards the center of rotation, B is moving aft and it lifts the ship from aft and ship will trim by head. So this is what happens. It means that if the center of rotation was also in the, the line of B and G, the ship would not trim. So this is true even for the box vessel. If the center of rotation is in line with BG, the ship will not trim. But even for a box vessel, if center of rotation is not in line with BG, the ship will trim. So it is all the game of position of center of rotation. If the center of rotation was over here, B would have moved forward and the ship would have trimmed by uh, stern. Now the reverse would happen if the ship goes from fresh water to salt water. The ship would be lifted. The buoyancy layer that was there would get detected. Now you are removing the buoyancy from the ship and buoyancy would be removed from the point of center of rotation, point where the center of rotation is, which means that center of buoyancy would go away from the center of rotation, right? And wherever B goes, it will lift the ship from there. So can we in general say that when the ship goes from one density to other density, if the ship goes to lighter density, buoyancy is added, center of rotation uh, represents the point at which the buoyancy is added or subtracted. If the ship goes to lighter water, the center of buoyancy will move towards the F and wherever the F was, the ship will be lifted from there, whether it is forward or aft. And in case of deduction of the buoyancy layer, that means when the ship goes from fresh water to salt water, what happens is the center of buoyancy will move opposite to the point where the center of rotation is and wherever the center of buoyancy goes, it will lift the ship from there. So to understand this concept, let us assume, uh, let us try and do one example. Say uh, the ship's displacement, as I told you before, displacement does not change with the density. Suppose delta is the ship's displacement and this is the initial density 
1.025 and the final density is suppose 1.002. So the difference of the two is the change of underwater volume, right? Difference of the two is the change of underwater volume. Now, in these kind of numericals, normally you are given TPC. TPC may be given for fresh water, TPC may be given for salt water or for any intermediate density. Now, TPC is to be used, please listen carefully. TPC is to be used only for finding out water plane area. The biggest application of TPC is to find water plane area. So suppose the TPC is given for salt water, we can say 100 TPC upon 1.025 is equal to water plane area. This difference, that means change of underwater volume is called small v. Now small v is in meter cube and water plane area is in meter square. When we divide small v with the water plane area, what you will get is the bodily rise or bodily sinkage. Do you understand how to find out bodily sinkage? This should be the only method to find out bodily rise or bodily sinkage. Because then a TPC which you are using you don't have to worry TPC is to be used for salt water or fresh water. You are not in confusion. The purpose of TPC is only to find out the water plane area. So this is how we find out change of underwater volume. This is how we find out the water plane area. And we get the bodily rise or bodily sinkage. Now, having understood this, let us say, the center of buoyancy moves from here to here. I want to know what is the longitudinal shift of center of buoyancy. So can I say that BB in longitudinal direction, that is shift of center of buoyancy is equal to small v into uh, BF. BF means the longitudinal distance from B to F divide by capital V which is underwater volume of the ship in final density. So can we find out the four and a half shift of center of buoyancy by this formula small v multiplied by BF. BF means the distance from center of buoyancy to center of flotation longitudinal distance and this is the final underwater volume. So once we know the BB isn't it we have found out the longitudinal shift of center of buoyancy or we have found out the separation of G from B. So can we understand instead of LCB difference LCG into uh, displacement upon 100 MCTC is equal to trim change. Can we modify this formula instead of saying LCB difference LCG? Can we say the BB1 is the longitudinal shift between uh, the original position? BB1 is the longitudinal shift of center of buoyancy multiplied by displacement divided by 100 and MCTC should be used for final density. If the final density is fresh water, we need to convert MCTC into fresh water by multiplying with fresh water density dividing by salt water density and this will give you trim change. Once we have trim change, we can find out TRA and TRF. TRA is the change of aft draft because of trim change alone. TRF is change of forward draft because of trim change alone. And we apply uh, in a standard uh, conditions the initial draft forward and aft, initial draft, then bodily sinkage or bodily rise forward and aft, and TRF, TRA. And this will give you the final draft. The main thing which I wanted to uh, tell you here is the change of trim is because of center of flotation not originally in BG line. If the center of flotation was in a vertical line uh, of BG then the trim would not change when the ship goes from one density to the other. Density. The change of trim because of Scott can be understood in this fashion. Can you imagine a model of the ship that you have? you try to sink that model of the ship bodily down. You will find that it is not going uniformly down. You find extra pressure on one of the hands and you find that the ship is, the model is tending to 
change the term. What could be the reason? The reason is this only. Because uh, if on a certain draft the center of rotation position is different than because in a certain draft if center of rotation is not in the busy line it is somewhere else then when we change the draft when we change the underwater volume increased buoyancy takes place the point at which the new buoyancy is added or subtracted is at center of rotation which is not in line with BG this is what causes the change of trend.